a Swedish company known for incredibly well-made cars with bulletproof technology, robust structure and successful racing career. A brand that has many fans and cars to be really proud of, especially during the brightest years. Saab was just different. The company Saab as we know it started as an aircraft builder for Swedish country defense during World War II in 1937 in the city of Linköping. That did not last long when after the war the aircraft demand weakened and Saab had to look elsewhere. The decision was made to continue as an automobile mark. In 1945 a prototype called Project 92 was created as a succession after the Saab 91 Sapphire three-seater aircraft model. The airplane production would not stop there, but a serious invention of good cars was coming soon. The first concept, the UR Saab, or original Saab, was made in four examples and meant to compete against cars like Opel Kadett or Volkswagen Beetle. These rivals were real-wheel drive, but Saab intended to compete with a revolutionary layout, a transversely mounted front engine front-wheel drive that was an early adoption of a concept which became the standard of a modern car. The Swedish automaker took inspiration from DKW, creating a twin-cylinder two-stroke engine. The concept came to the public as a Saab 92 with an emphasis on aerodynamics, safety and winter capabilities. From 1949 to 1951 they managed to sell 20,000 cars and in 1955 the 92 evolved into a 93 model gaining a three-cylinder engine, the typical trademarked trapezoidal front grille and features like a soft top cabrio version or two-point seat belts in 1957. The 93 continued in rally racing, which started two weeks after the 92 introduction. Racing helped Saab to create not only safe and over-engineered cars, but also truly good handling ones. To boost the sales, especially in the USA, Saab introduced an open-top sports racer called the Sonnet in 1955. It shared many parts with the 93 and thanks to aircraft knowledge and access to superior aero materials, they created a 600 kg lightweight aluminum chassis sports car. The plan was to produce 2000 of them, but that never happened. Instead of the Sonnet, the GT750 was presented to the public in New York in 1958 as a more powerful sportier Saab 93, having seat belts as standard. The three cylinder had twin carburetors and with an optional tuning kit the power raised from 50 to 55 horsepower, most notably from 4400 to 5000 rpm. It was significantly faster than a stock 93. The two stroke engine was still used in the upcoming models, the 95 and 96, but a new engine came along from Ford stock, a Tonus V4. The V4 became a four-stroke, more emission-friendly alternative that really suited Saabs. This new unit helped Sona to survive as the two-stroke was less competitive and with increased emission requirements, also not worth continuing with. Besides, up to 50% of all Sonnets still live thanks to museums and car collectors. Another large step in Saab history was an introduction of the Saab 99 in 1968, considered a big family car, larger than the outdated Saab 96. A Triumph Slant 4 engine was borrowed, later also heavily redesigned and marketed as a Saab B and H engine series, the H being a higher compression ratio series. These slanted engines became core motors for the following several years. The Saab 99 was also meant to carry Triumph's V8, but the idea was scrapped in favor of a turbocharged B-series engine with the same peak power level. In 
it is necessary to drive the car to believe that such a seemingly endless surge of strong acceleration is possible from a 2 litre engine in a far from a lightweight car, written in Modern Motor in 1978. Saab was one of the early adopters of small turbocharged engines, which made the Saab 99 Turbo as one of the first family turbo automobiles. An interesting fact about it, the handbrake was on the front wheels. The brand new 900 model was sold from 1978 alongside the 99 for a couple of years, with certain differentiating aspects. It kept the slanted engines that were 180 degree turned with the clutch and output shaft at the front of the car. The slanted engine not only provided a low profile hood, but also space for the gearbox to be mounted below the engine, the top of the gearbox being the engine oil sump. Featuring Saab's front double wishbone suspension, the car handled incredibly well and later in 1985, with standard anti-roll bars and the 175 horsepower 2 litre B202 turbo engine, it really accentuated the sporty handling of the 900. Following the 900, a new 900 generation was introduced in 1994 based on an Opel Vectra platform since GM purchased a significant share hold in Saab. Thanks to this part share, Saab finally made some profit, but it lost the typical Saab feeling known from previous very quality and high engineered Swedish made Saabs. It also lost the front double wishbone suspension and all the upcoming models, the 93 as an updated second gen 900 or the 95 were less and less Saabish. The company did not end here, but ever since 2000, Saab was completely under control of General Motors and Saab was no longer the car maker our fathers got to know it. Saab will always stay in memory as a brand that was quality, high engineered and just different from the others. Perhaps it was in the core of the brand putting high standards and safety thanks to the aircraft part of Saab. But it was less evident when real Saab people let go the brand into other hands when times were tough. Saab will be always remembered as an aircraft producer that once decided to engineer some of the coolest cars on the planet. What is it you remember about Saab? Please share it with me in the comments down below and like the video if you love it. Thank you for watching and I will see you in the next one. Cheers! Thank <laughs> you.